I'm sure it will look just lovely on you. It's much nicer than the rags you have on. Listen here, I'm not just here to entertain you, you know. Yes, you look like you could stand to lose a few pounds. We don't do barbecue here, hot sauce for brains. You'll get nothing and like it. Come back when you're a little more with it, will you? One of the biggest complaints that you might see if you're an Animal Crossing fan within the Animal Crossing community is, I miss mean villagers, or I miss rude villagers. From the outside looking in, what on earth does that mean? I can see a lot of confusion with that argument alone, but it's actually a very valid observation and commentary on Animal Crossing and how its dialogue has changed over the years. If you go back in time and play the older Animal Crossing games, it becomes apparent right away. The writing across the board when it comes to Animal Crossing characters with their personalities and how they interact with the player were originally a lot more dynamic and in general just different than the villager dialogue we get nowadays in Animal Crossing games. And this isn't just like some Animal Crossing conspiracy theory that fans had come up with. Nintendo has stated in the past that they've had to actively tone things down because some characters were maybe coming across as too harsh for the style of game that Animal Crossing aims to be. So we want to take a look back at some of the more interesting examples, but also cover everything from things like villagers, mean letters you might get in the mail, and specialty characters. For this video, we're going to cover everything. So let's go back a bit to the earlier days of Animal Crossing. Okay, so one thing to note when it comes to Animal Crossing games is in New Leaf and New Horizons, there are eight different different personality types that you can have in your Animal Crossing village or island. For male villagers, there's jocks, lazy, cranky, and smug villagers. And then for females, there's sisterly, normal, peppy, and snooty villagers. However, sisterly and smug villagers only were introduced in Animal Crossing New Leaf, meaning that before the 3DS release, there was only six types of personalities you would have in your game. And one feature in the older Animal Crossing games was when you first arrived in your Animal Crossing town, villagers that typically had the snooty or cranky personality type would initially come off as a little bit standoffish and straight up rude to the player character. And the reason so many players so vividly remember this is partially because of the fact that there was a smaller personality pool back then, meaning that the likelihood of you having multiple villagers with these personality types was relatively high. It's really fun to look back at these older games and just read some of the dialogue of things that characters would say to players. Over the years, JVGS Jeff has collected a lot of great occurrences showcasing these rude villagers. It's definitely worth checking out after this video if you want to see more rude goodness, I guess. But let's look at a couple. Hey, why are you even talking to me? And then back then you could respond like, give me work. Oh, yeah, I've got a job for you, but it won't be easy. I want you to take this glasses case to my buddy Yuka. The problem is nobody knows what town Yuka is living in now. So are you ready to undertake a challenge of this magnitude? This alone <laughs> is a ridiculous request, so if you don't decide to take the quest up because you don't want to fill your pocket space up with an item where then you have to go and try to find a friend who happens to have Yuka living in their town and then do the whole memory card thing with this game. Tom's not too happy about that. What? What did you say? You asked me for work, you incredible loser. Don't try to mess with me, you're messing with the best. I'll mess you into next week, get out of my sight. Yeah guys, back in the OG Animal Crossing days, if you turn down a job request, you might get directly threatened by a villager. There were also a lot of side-handed compliments some villagers would have. You appear to be the picture of health this morning. Aren't you the least bit cold? Are you too dense to notice? Hey, how did a steak head like you get a flat stag beetle like that? Seriously, how? Really, such injustice, a fine creature like that in such woefully uncultured hands. I think we both can agree, you clearly don't deserve it, so why don't you give me the flat stag beetle? I knew it, as I expected. You don't want to give it up because you can't catch them yourself. And don't think for a moment that the only reason I want it is because I can't catch them myself either. If you must know the truth, I'm not interested in that flat stag beetle at all. I was just testing you. I mean, these are like some mind games going on here. Now, what was interesting is when I dove back into these older games for research purposes, my whole mindset was, yeah, those snooty villagers or maybe the cranky villagers, they were kind of harsh, but you know what? Actually, maybe just as a kid, I never noticed, but some of the other villager personality types can also be just equally as rude, just you don't catch it. 
it as often. By the way, have you, uh, oh man, how am I gonna put this? Have you gotten fatter? I love that you get two options, maybe or what's it to you. In this case, it was Jeff here, but whoa, 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 Jeff's getting upset. Look out, rabid Jeff on the loose. You totally travel light, right? You can definitely carry my gift then, can't you? Awesome, thanks a bundle. So which do you want, carpet or wallpaper? Okay, you got it, a carpet. How about this one? This one is one of my favorites, it's a stone tile. You would think at this point things are going pretty smoothly. While you have no option here to interact whatsoever, the next response is pretty unexpected. What, did you just sniff? Do you have some kind of problem? Because I mean, if it isn't good enough for you, I can always just take my stone tile back. You got it for free. For free, you big baby. Show some appreciation. Oh, nasty. You got stung by a bunch of bees? That means you were shaking trees. You were, weren't you? Well, you better come clean. Why were you shaking trees? You found something, didn't you? Aren't you going to tell me? Fine, don't share your secret. You deserved to get stung. What is funny though is even after this first game was pretty harsh, when Animal Crossing Wild World rolled around, they kept up the mean villager thing for a while longer. When I spent 100 days in Animal Crossing Wild World, I had to write a letter to a villager and I wrote a very heartfelt letter and the response definitely was not what I expected. The writing was so terrible that I had a hard time reading your letter. Still, I could feel the passion in your words, so it wasn't all bad. I'm getting mixed signals from this. Everyone likes mail, even if the writing's bad, especially if presents are involved. I feel like I know where this is going. Hey, aren't you a little, are you putting a little chub on? You blew off my training regimen, didn't you? Uh, uh, no? Liar, you lie. And lying is almost as bad as getting chubbed out. If you were doing 100 ab slaps a day, your belly wouldn't be so bulgy. Man, he got heated for that and then stayed heated. Now there are some staple characters that are in every Animal Crossing town as like vendors or specialty characters that also can get a bit angry at times. Let's turn our attention to one of the most divisive Nintendo characters of all time, Mr. Rossetti, a character who was written in such a way that Nintendo would eventually have to take action about how this character would be written in later Animal Crossing titles. But man, in the earliest games, this character was straight up unhinged. Now, of course, if you're a newer fan of Animal Crossing, you might not actually know who this character is. Essentially, in the older games, there wasn't autosave, so you had to save the game manually every time you were done. And if you forgot, this good old bull would show up and give you a piece of his mind, reminding you that you need to save your game every time. And he definitely, in the early games, like the GameCube version, was not friendly about it. Not only would he berate you for quite a while, you'd be locked in the dialogue for like two minutes and he just doesn't stop, but he also wasn't very nice. Not being able to do things over again, that's called life, and you best get used to it. What? What was that? It's just a game. Don't make such a big deal out of it. That's what I'm talking about. Your attitude. It stinks. It's just a game. When? What is that? I'll tell you what it is. It's pathetic. You ought to be ashamed. Huh? W what's that? Speak up, you reset happy cheater. You telling me you never said that at all? <laughs> all right, maybe I had some dirt in my ears. Forget about it. Let's move on. That's just a part of an excerpt that Rossetti gives, and there's so many different versions, and he just goes straight up no mercy mode on you if you've reset your game. In the GameCube version, sometimes also randomly you would get it where if you reset your game while he's lecturing you, he will threaten to fully reset and erase your entire Animal Crossing save file. And not only does he actually threaten you, he says he's gonna do it right there and then, and then all of a sudden, bam, your screen turns black. What? And then Rossetti comes comes back and he's like, ha, huh, just kidding, but I probably scared you to death into thinking you just lost everything you've ever done. Now make sure you actually save your game when you're done. That is so brutal if you think about it. There's also the chance that he will make you type a sentence directly back to him using the little chat keyboard thing and it has to be verbatim exactly what he says or else he will make you type it again and you have to memorize what he says. It doesn't give you any hints. You have to see what he says then type it exactly the way that he typed it and this could just be a time consuming, annoying thing, but you gotta admit, it is kind of a funny and charming thing that they put in here, no matter how brutal it really was. That's it. It's go time. This mole's had enough. Time to pay the piper. My patience gauge is now officially on empty, and the anger gauge is way in the red zone. You and your smug little devil may care attitude. I'm gonna tunnel through your house. Yeah! I do have to say, the expressions on Rossetti's face in the GameCube version were definitely absolutely 
absolutely top notch. And there is some comedy mixed in there too, like where right after that last statement, his leg cramps up and changes his mind. In Animal Crossing Wild World, Mr. Rossetti would be brought back again. And for the most part, his characteristics are the same. He doesn't necessarily make you type up a sentence, but he does still have the same attitude he's always had. Hey, I know what you're thinking. This is my game. I can do whatever I want. Look, I hear you, pal, loud and clear, but we got rules here. They ain't negotiable. Did I explain that slow enough for you? Yeah, we clear here? Good. Here's another really good one from Wild World. I really wish I hadn't washed my white boxers with my red sweatshirt, but is turning the power off without saving gonna change any of that? Of course it ain't, punk. He's going straight for name calling here. That kind of thing only happens in video games. In real life, in the real world, it ain't happening. And that's normal. Hear me? That's the way it is, right? It's taking whatever comes your way, the good and the bad, that gives life flavor. It's all that stuff rolled together that makes life worth living. Turning the power off because you didn't get an item you really, really wanted? Or trying to backtrack and avoid some sticky situation? That's pathetic. I mean, there's some life lessons in there for sure, I guess, but I think just the way that he uses hyperbole and exaggeration and sarcasm mixed together made this character incredibly unique. Now, when it came to Animal Crossing City Folk, you can actually see a very intentional and direct shift with this character. Just reading through a lot of the dialogue, he is still kind of stern and firm, but he definitely doesn't like blow his top as often and go to like name calling or he kind of lays off on some of the wording that insinuates that you're dumb or stupid or too slow to realize you're supposed to save the game. But if you continuously not save the game, he will eventually get angry again. Yarg, you again! Quit messing around, you punk. How many times do I gotta do this? Okay, this is it. You wanna go? We're going. Today is the day I put on my unhappy hat. I know exactly what you think about our little situation. Oh yeah, I got your number now, punk. Here's the deal. I give up. Reset. Don't reset. I don't care. It's your call. That's right, kid. You're free to decide. Free as some big cheating bird. Honest, I give up. I'm tired of digging out here and back over and over. I can see it in those eyes. You wanna reset, don't you? You love doing it. Well, let me help you out if you want it so bad. Sure, I'll just do it for you. You can't see it from where you're sitting, but I got a Wii remote right here in a little holster. So what do you say I just grab that bad boy and wipe the slate clean? We'll forget everything. Sound good, you little punk? Ready to start all over? See ya, kid. And then he hits you with the black screen just like the GameCube days. Then he brings it back with another gotcha. And man, was that brutal and a surprise considering for the most part when it comes to City Folk, he keeps his head pretty tame. He's very much so dealing with with the repercussions of getting so angry about all of this. Now, unfortunately, after City Folk, when it came to Mr. Rossetti, his character's dialogue was changed dramatically moving forward. Matter of fact, they were unsure whether or not the character would even be in Animal Crossing New Leaf at some points in development. In an Iwata Asks, a series that they did back with the late Nintendo president Satoru Iwata, the team actually explained that Rossetti was giving them some issues back in the day. In a quote, Iwata said, it seems like younger female players in particular are scared. I've heard that some of them have even cried. So when it came to this character existing in Animal Crossing New Leaf, he was defanged quite a bit. But they did advertise some other big things, like they added the Surveillance Center as a public works project for Animal Crossing New Leaf. And then down the road in Animal Crossing New Horizons, this character wasn't necessary because autosave became a thing, but the character very much still exists in New Horizons, and old fans of the series already know where he is, but if you're a newer fan, you might have never noticed, but he's actually the character you talk to whenever you have to use the rescue services. The first time you use him, he even makes a little reference to the fact that the game has autosave. Now, Rossetti was definitely the tip of the iceberg when it came to villagers that were super angry or that could come across as very rude, but there were some other characters that were not just regular villagers that also could come across as very rude in the older games. In the old games, you could get Tom Nook really mad if you would take the uniform he gave you and threw it outside on the floor then came back in without the uniform. You haven't changed yet? What did you do with your uniform? That was store property, you know? Great, now I have to give you another one. Be sure to actually put it on this time. Please let me know when you're done changing. Then if you change out of your uniform, he will equally get mad. <laughs> Why did you change out of your uniform? Just who gave you permission to do that? I'm wondering. I swear, what is it with kids these days? Always needing a casual workplace. Why, when I was young, we... I suppose I must change with the times, yes? Go on with your hip hipness. Wear whatever you like. 
but you can't wear anything that might make my customers feel uncomfortable, yes? On this point, I won't budge. That's just the way society works, you understand? Sometimes you have to obey the rules, yes? Now, if you do the same thing in Animal Crossing City Folk, Tom Nook will completely lose his mind. He will blow a gasket. Why aren't your work clothes on? Kids these days just don't understand how to dress for the job. Appalling. Okay, then some of you may remember in the older Animal Crossing games when you would pay off debt or mail things out, you would go to the post office and usually there was a nice pelican duck thing working there named Pelly. She'd help you out. She's very polite. But if you came in the evening during the night shift, oh boy, you would get to interact with Phyllis. And Phyllis is like a perfect character in my opinion because She's snarky and rude. She goes off the script of what you would expect someone in that job to do. And she's like that equivalent of a person like working a job who definitely like is saying things under their breath and you're like, hey, you, you know I can hear you, right? Ugh, a customer. Usually when you're done talking to Phyllis, you get like a quick close the door on your way out and be quick about it. One thing I did like though about Animal Crossing Wild World in particular though was sometimes these characters, while they were kind of rude on the front, would get a little bit of an interesting story with them or some depth, like you would go and talk to them and they would elaborate on way more than what you expected. Sometimes you would catch Phyllis in the coffee shop and you get a little bit of insight. Ugh, I can't believe I have to go to work after this. Do you understand at all? Do you? Uh, hello? Fine, just do what you always do. Go all slack-jawed. If it's about work, Pelly's at the town hall right now, so do me a favor, ask her. Sheesh, what part of off the clock don't you understand? And from stories like this, you can get some interesting information, like a weird love triangle between these pelicans or whatever. Also, besides the fact that you could get mean letters back from villagers back in the day if you wrote them, you also would occasionally get a letter from the Happy Home Academy grading your house, and they didn't like it, they would be sure to just tell you. A big house does not always make a nice house. In fact, yours looks like a warehouse. Also, Gracie's an interesting character. She'll show up and just very much so judge your fashion sense, and she's not nice about it either. She will straight up tell you that you are not a good person if you don't answer some questions correctly, or at least make you feel that way. Don't even go name dropping, Gracie, honey. You're nothing but a fashion wannabe. Wow. I do think it's important to point out though, with Animal Crossing, over the years the dialogue definitely has changed, but I think I have a better understanding why people appreciated this dialogue so much. While yes, the villagers can be much, much ruder or straight up meaner, I think there was a level of depth to them that made them feel more alive than maybe what we have nowadays in New Horizons. You don't have villagers just randomly starting beef with you for no real reason, and back in the day, it was kind of rewarding to have a bond with some of these characters who started off kind of standoffish or were just outright rude to you, but slowly over time you would learn a bit of their story and you would help them out and bond with them and eventually you would have these villagers that weren't always angry at you and you maybe knew how to set them off or not, but still, it was an interesting time for the Animal Crossing characters. I think similarly to what happened with Rossetti where they chose to tone him down in New Leaf and New Horizons probably was an approach that they ended up taking for all of Animal Crossing moving forward to try to keep the game appealing for all ages and not necessarily have scary characters or characters that are outright mean, especially if they're angry or mean for no reason. like. You just accepted a gift and then they blow up on you. I think more so than anything else though, the big thing that's lost by changing up the way that villager dialogue works is the fact that it nowadays, the villager dialogue doesn't feel nearly as clever or pointed as the older dialogue. There's so many just little jokes and clever responses written into a lot of these character moments and I really, really miss that in the newer games. I don't think that they need to necessarily make the villagers as antagonistic in the future, but I think that they could still capture that sense of very clever dialogue that they had back in the day and put that back into a future Animal Crossing title. I think it's something that's severely lacking and missing, and I think that they can do it a step up or a step better because this stuff is fun, even when a villager just decides to drop a random insult on you. I also don't think the reintroduction of somewhat meaner villagers would really move the needle either way on how Animal Crossing as a whole franchise 
would perform. Sure, New Horizons very much so appeals to any age group, but I think even that more advanced dialogue back in the day still kept Animal Crossing an appealing game for all age groups. It just added more depth and character growth. But I guess this would be a good point to turn this around to you guys and see what you guys think about this whole situation. Are you a fan of the way that they've evolved the dialogue or do you think that these older games had some of the greatest dialogue of all time? Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section below. Make sure you are subscribed with notifications on for more videos like this. We are an Animal Crossing channel that puts out new content every week. We have some really cool videos on our channel if you want more Animal Crossing stuff to watch. But otherwise, that's it for today. We'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video.